So you're ready to take the summative edulastic test on genetics. Um, that's great. I hope you do well on it. I wanted to give you a few hints and pointers to help you out so that you know exactly what to do for this test. This should be the last of your summative tests for the quarter as of taping this. Uh, it's supposed to be, but they always change things on us. So hopefully I, what I'm telling you is true. All right, so I want to give you some hints on how to do well on this test. Keep in mind, if you do not do well on this test the first time, you can retake the test. You just need to tell me, Mr. Reddick, in an email, that you want to retake the test, and then I'll just reset it for you. I will delete all of your previous answers. So uh, make sure you copy down what you need. You're taking notes as you're taking this test the first time. You really do need to take notes as you're doing this. So that way you will get things right the first time or you, know, you probably have no chance of getting the notes if you don't do notes to begin with. When I took this test as a practice, I had to take notes to make sure that I got it. So you would not do yourself a disservice by taking notes. It's very important that you do. All right. So uh, basically what you have on this test is several scenarios. And in these scenarios, you'll be asked some questions. So the first one happens to be a chondroplasia. So you'll have this thing written over here about achondroplasia. So this is a dwarfism thing. Uh, so you'll have that there. Uh, I would carefully read this because you're going to have to tell me what type of inheritance is this? How is the gene being passed down? So when you look at this pull down window, you've got to figure out which one of those these are. I think this is a good time for a review of what all of these mean. So let's make sure you know that. So if a gene an allele of a gene, a version of the gene is autosomal dominant. That means it's not on a sex chromosome. You got one copy, you're gonna have this trait. Autosomal recessive, that means you need to have two copies of this gene. This again is not on a sex chromosome. Uh, it's just on a normal chromosome. And, uh, but you need two copies to see the trait. Incomplete dominance means one of them it's usually written that one's dominant, one's recessive. How it works in practice is that uh, if you've got two of the dominant alleles, you've got a really high dose of it. If you've got two recessives, you have a low or no dose. And um, if you've got one of each, you're somewhere in between. That's incomplete dominance. So if you've got the gene for tallness and you've got two of those, you're going to be really tall. If you've got no genes for tallness, you're going to be really short. And if you got one of each, you're going to be in the middle. If it's in. Co-dominant means generally these genes will be written in capital letters because they're both dominant. If you have these genes, you will see them. So if somebody's got A blood gene and the B blood gene, their blood cells are going to be AB. You're going to see both traits. And uh, the only uh, sex-linked Disorders we looked at were the recessive ones. Uh, in mind with those, if you're female, you have to have two X chromosomes, each with that recessive gene on it to see it. If you're male, because you only have one X chromosome, you only need one gene. So it looks like it's dominant in males and recessive in females, but it's considered X-linked recessive because technically it's a recessive gene. It's just males only have one X chromosome, so they will show it. So there'll be more males with this. So what you're going to do is you're going to read about this thing here and then decide which one of these it is and then answer the question. Now, if there's not enough information there and you're saying, I don't have enough information here. Here, I'll tell you a way to fix that. You just come over here. Let's get the whole thing here. And go E and you open a new window in Google and go control V, hopefully it would have written it there. Hit enter, and then you can find more information on achondroplasia. You don't have to go with just what's there. Uh, so keep that in mind. You're not limited just to what's written here. So that should help you out. All right. The next type of question basically asks for genotypes, mothers and fathers. So that's where you got to come down here. And this is what I would actually start taking notes on 
and writing down. So I would write down that the mother is homozygous recessive and assign a letters for her. Uh, the father's heterozygous, I would assign letters for him. All right. And then you might want to even just go further and set up your Punnett square because you're asked not only what the mother's genotype is, what's the father's genotype, and check all the genotypes of the offspring. Of course, that would be in your Punnett square. If you did the Punnett square, you should get these answered right. Uh, let me just go back here a second. I want to point out that basically there's a scenario on one of each of these situations. So uh, there's only going to be one sex linked uh, scenario, one co dominance, one incomplete dominance. Okay. So uh, keep that in mind. I shouldn't see lots of X's because there's only one sex linked scenario here. All right. Um, and then you got to figure out the percentage of a child inheriting it. That depends on your parents. Every parent was a little different depending on which test you are. I don't think I mentioned it. There's seven different tests, versions of this test. So I wouldn't bother asking your friends because they probably don't have the same version as you. They got different parents. Therefore, they're going to have a different percentage. But I keep just look at your Punnett square and remember your possible percentages are going to be 0, 25, 50, 75, 100, and that's it. It's going to be one of those numbers. All right. Uh, so you're going to enter your percentage, and then just and just by entering percentage, just make sure you just type in the number. All right. And then you'll uh, it'll ask how it's passed down. Again, it's pull down window with your things. Uh, keep in mind here we're looking at how is the trait, how is the trait that we see, the phenotype, how is that being passed down? Before, they were asking, how is the gene passed down? So keep that in mind, how that's being asked. All right. Um, okay, so if you get done with this and your test is totally screwed up, you want to retake it, and you don't know how it's going or what's going wrong, or you screw it up the second time, at that point, you should probably be asking me some questions. Uh, you might want to take some pictures of your uh, Punnett square for that problem, and let me take a look at it. If you're I look at, I need to see your mother and father's uh, phenotypes here, so that I can or genotypes there. I'm sorry, so that I know if you did your Punnett square right, that might be where your problem is, and I can give you some pointers on how to do this. Ideally, we would have done all these Punnett squares in class, and I would be looking over your shoulder, making sure you got it right that you knew immediately that you were doing something wrong and we could fix it real quick. Unfortunately, that didn't take place because of the way we do the teaching right now. All right, but keep in mind, you can retake it. I will allow you to retake it up to three times. After that, it's quite clear you're just guessing. So, uh, and not really trying to figure it out. So I'll let you retake it up to three times. Uh, so do your best. And if you need help, let me know. All right, that ends this.